Good Wednesday morning. It's May 5th, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bites Last, which you can find at GuyMcPherson.com. I would strongly encourage you to go to GuyMcPherson.com upon seeing this video and check out the science update for the information posted there beyond this video. We might call this video No May, No Might, Only Is, because that's where we're at. A little context. I recently watched the 2021 film Godzilla vs. Kong. Godzilla has been the people's protector for centuries. He turned against the people when they began to meddle with nature and after they created a mechanical Godzilla. Kong is the last of his kind and is the traditional enemy of Godzilla. He is the protector of the natural world and the wild places and also of the individuals that he cares about. Kong faced off against Godzilla when it looked like Godzilla had lost his mind. But in the end, Godzilla and Kong realized they were fighting the same enemy, technology. Only together were they able to beat the real monster, technology gone bad. With respect to climate change, we have triggered dozens of self-reinforcing feedback loops. These are the bad guys in the reality show currently playing out on Earth. As I have pointed out several times, any one of these positive feedbacks indicates that climate change is irreversible. And as I've also pointed out on several occasions, these self-reinforcing feedback loops keep getting reported in the peer-reviewed literature and by the corporate media as if they lie in the future rather than already having been triggered. Today, I'd like to provide two examples from among many. First up, Fizz.org reports via headline on April 30th, 2021, quote, Amazon may be turning from friend to foe. End quote. Here's the caption on the photograph atop the page. Quote, the Brazilian Amazon released nearly 20% more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere over the last decade than it absorbed, according to a stunning report that shows humanity can no longer depend on the world's largest tropical forest to help absorb man-made carbon pollution. End quote. And here's the lead, quote, from 2010 through 2019, Brazil's Amazon basin gave off 16.6 .6 billion tons of CO2 while drawing down only 13.9 billion tons, end quote. That makes the sound of the, as if the Amazon has become a source of atmospheric carbon dioxide during this decade, because it has. The Fizz.org paper refers to a paper in the peer-reviewed literature, as usual. Specifically, according to the, paper, to the title of a paper published last Thursday, April 29th, 2021, in Nature Climate Change, quote, carbon loss from forest degradation exceeds that from deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon, end quote. As reported in the abstract of this peer-reviewed paper, quote, during 2010 to 2019, the Brazilian Amazon had a cumulative gross loss of 4.45 petagrams against a gross gain of 3.78 petagrams carbon, resulting in a net above-ground biomass loss of 0 0.67 petagrams carbon, end quote. Bear in mind that a petagram is one quadrillion grams or a trillion kilograms, and that's a lot. Example number two of self-reinforcing feedback loops being reported in the peer-reviewed literature and the corporate media as if they lie in the future rather than being triggered already comes again from fizz.org via headline on April 30th, 2021. Quote, methane release rapidly increases in the wake of melting ice sheets, end quote. From the first paragraph comes this nugget, quote, melting of the Arctic ice sheets drives the release of the potent greenhouse gas methane from the ocean floor, end quote. According to the peer-reviewed paper's lead author, quote, as the ice sheet melted and pressure on the seafloor lessened, during the Eemian, methane was released in violent spurts, slow seeps, or a combination of both. By the time the ice disappeared completely some thousands of years later, methane emissions had stabilized, end quote. A quote later in the article, quote, the present-day acceleration of Greenland's ice melt is an analog 
for our model. We believe that the future release of methane from below in nearby these ice sheets is likely, end quote. And the lead author's bottom line, quote, the projections of future climate change should definitely include the release of methane following in the wake of diminishing ice sheets. Past can be used to better inform the future. Then we go to another peer-reviewed article, this one associated with the phys.org description I just gave. The article is titled, quote, Ice Sheet Melt Drove Methane Emissions in the Arctic During the Last Two Interglacials, end quote. It was published in the journal Geology on March 22, 2021, and it makes a solid case for methane as one, a powerful greenhouse gas, and two, that forms a self-reinforcing feedback loop as the ice melts. It happened in the past. It is happening even faster today. Here's the lead from the abstract of the peer-reviewed paper. Quote, Circumarctic glacial ice is melting in an unprecedented mode, and release of currently trapped geological methane may act as a positive feedback on ice sheet retreat during global warming. May act as a positive feedback? It's already happening. Just as the Amazon basin has already become a carbon source, so too has atmospheric methane already become a self-reinforcing feedback loop. I've reported on this topic at least a dozen times at GuyMcPherson.com, and methane plays a role in 14 different irreversible self-reinforcing feedback loops, also reported at GuyMcPherson.com. As I've been reporting for several years, anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases have led to abrupt irreversible climate change. We've been warned about the outcome for decades. As ancient Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu reportedly said, quote, if you do not change directions, you may end up where you are heading, end quote. We did not change our collective direction, despite many warnings. It seems we are nearing the end of the road for our species. In light of this probable outcome, we have options. Living with urgency, living with integrity, and living with love come to mind. Stay tuned as we'll try to produce another one of these science updates in about a week.